Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today we're going to discuss a couple different ways how you can trim the top of a cylinder while throwing a piece because we all know that an even thrown or a well thrown cylinder with an even top gives us a better success rate in the end for whatever we're trying to make. And we all have to do that from time to time, sometimes more than we would like. But I'm hoping today to give you a couple tips on things that I know how to do or I've learned to make that process more successful more often and to help you make better pieces. So let's go. All right, I decided I would do the two perspectives on this video so that I could give you two different angles and I'll probably even move the top angle to another side uh, as I try the couple different uh, cutting techniques and show it to you a couple different ways. Uh, but I've just got two and a half pounds here or around to two and a half pounds that I'm gonna throw with. It wasn't really that critical for this. I would say there are a couple main reasons that uh, a piece needs to be trimmed while it's being thrown or uh, especially a cylinder early on the reason it would need to be trimmed um, the main reasons I would say are that either you don't get the clay ball centered well enough for what you're trying to make or while you're opening or pulling the clay ball you've pulled it off center or pulled unevenly as you're doing that so I would say those are the the main two Another possibility could be that there are hard and soft spots in the clay and that as you're pulling it, it causes it to go uneven, not because you're pulling incorrectly or not evenly, but because as your hands have even pressure and you hit those hard and soft spots, and they don't have to be drastically harder and softer than each other, but just the slight difference with an even pressure and pulling could change the... Uh, the evenness of that wall and cause the top to be uneven so I feel a little bit awkward here because I'm trying to stay out of the way of the top camera and also the microphone's like right by my head um, I'm also trying to think about maybe pulling this uneven on purpose so that I can trim it and that feels weird also um, but <clears throat> not going through the basics of how this is being pulled or thrown here uh, but just want to get it pulled to a point that it, 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 whoops, look at that, I messed up, not even on purpose, hey, that's good, just for the video, um, but that, that is going to give us an uneven top there, so uh, as you can see now, I have pulled this, I've not pulled it enough that if I was making something that I would want to pull it up enough, but you can already see that the top is running uneven, especially up and down, because I kind of, you know, held my hands here at the top to kind of even it up in width but you can even see in, in, in the width it, it, it changes a little bit. But now that the top is uneven, if you were pulling at any stage uh, and you wanted to even that up, uh, as you get later in throwing the piece, it gets m much harder to cut off the top because you've probably thrown it much thinner and then the top is kind of you know weaker uh, and you gotta be more delicate with it. Um, uh, I will cover <clears throat> I'll cover two main ways that I know that you can trim the top of a piece. Uh, I'll cover the first one, which I don't use, and then I'll cover the second one. The first one, I have, uh, when I've not had a needle tool, you can use a wire tool. Uh, now the thinner the wire, probably better, but this one's just the standard wire tool that you buy. Um, I can't remember who makes these, but there's all kinds of wire tools that you can buy. You can. Uh, use a wire tool and you may be thinking how does that work because it's not cutting right in you actually have to go down to the piece and then end up holding the wire steady at a certain height to get that cut even all the way through and then and then either stop the wheel or lift up and cut back through uh, and that can create an, an, an even cut all the way around the other one is of course with a needle tool um, so either way I would recommend adding water to the top of the piece before you do the cut because that's going to allow the wire or the needle tool to glide more easily and and smoothly into the clay to give you an even cut and it also will help cause a separation between 
the, the piece you're cutting off and the piece below it because I think a lot of people if this is dry and you go to cut into it it kind of attaches back because you haven't added that water as a way of creating a moisture barrier and kind of that slick separation between the two pieces so like I said if I was uh, and I usually don't do that with a sponge I would usually just get some water on my hands and I'll just add a little bit to the top just like that and if I was using my wire to cut this off I would get I would get the wire tight in my hands and just create this little kind of maybe one or two inch section here between my fingers kind of like you're flossing your teeth I'm gonna hold that tight and then uh, the wheel going an even steady pace and so maybe take your foot off the foot pedal and then uh, go down in and then once you get to a certain height you just kind of hold it steady. All right, sorry about that. I did not hit do not disturb on my phone and got interrupted by a phone call there. But uh, as you could see by the side angle there, if we did lose the top one, what I did is push the wire down into the clay till I got to a point and I just held it steady at this level. And then the clay uh, was separated. It did get kind of dry in that space, but then you can kind of lift up and either that clay will come with you or at least cut in half. And then you can stop the wheel if it's still up there and remove it. Uh, or it may come off like that one did and just fall to the side. Uh, after that, you would definitely need to come back and wet that again and then kind of even that up with your fingers. Uh, I usually do my left hand over the rim like this and then my right hand in here to kind of like compress it this way and down to kind of even it up. All right, so now uh, if we wanted to use the needle tool, here's what I would do. Let's, uh, let's kind of create another pull where we can pull a little too fast and get it uneven all right there we've got a uh, or we can just do this <laughs> there now we've got another uneven top on this piece uh, my preferred way as I said is using a needle tool uh, mainly because I can pick the height that I want to go into the uh, cylinder at and I can just push straight through until I get to my finger on the inside so what I'm going to do is add water like I said and then with the needle tool I'm kind of pushing some of that water into the clay as I'm pushing in and I'm, I'm bracing uh, my thumb on this hand so that they're kind of steadied. My, if I'm sitting down my, my uh, elbows are already locked into my legs and then I'm just going to push this gradually into the clay trying to hold my hands as steady as possible. Not, not banking on the steadiness of the clay but on the steadiness of my hands and push that needle tool all the way through until it hits the finger on the inside and then I can stop the wheel with my foot pedal lift up and move that to side and throw it in the splash pan so that's what we're gonna do here so I'm gonna add a little bit of water to the top I'm going to start pushing this needle tool in trying to hold it as steady as possible get to my finger on the inside pick up and there I have my unevenness trimmed off the top and as you can see it's really smooth really steady it was a lot easier to do to me and personally than using the uh, wire um, but that is uh, the two ways that I know how uh, I think the two best ways to trim off the top of an, un of an uneven piece all right now we'll try this again from a couple different angles just slightly different angles to give you an idea of both cuts again from those angles like I said we're just going to create an uneven top on purpose here now I'm going to grab my wire again I want to add a little bit of water to the top take that wire wrap it around like you're flossing your teeth get a tight piece of the wire right between your two thumbs like this and then push down into the clay until you get to a point where you're holding steady stop the wheel and pick up this one does work kind of nicely because then you can kind of just push that down over the wire and drop it into your splash pan or onto your wheel um, with your fingers that way. So that is one option for that one. And you can see that one's still cut, not quite as smoothly as the needle tool, but it did do the job. If you don't have a needle tool handy, but you do have a wire, you can still do that cut or that trim. Let's uh, here at least one more time, create an uneven top there that we want to trim all right now if I was wanting to do my needle tool I would add water to the top take my needle tool brace my two hands together as I said to keep them steady and then you're just pushing the needle tool in until it gets to your finger on the inside and then uh, slow the wheel down and lift up
and there you go. Now you have an even even top there. It can still now trimming the top is not going to change, you know, your thickness, which could be causing the uneven top. If you have thick and thin spots in the wall, that's what's probably causing the uneven top. So you may have to actually trim a piece multiple times while throwing. Uh, and you know, a needle tool is not going to solve that problem, but it will help you at least at the end of a piece, if you get to the end and you want to trim the top to it, at least have it running evenly uh, horizontally, then you can do that. And that, that does get trickier the thinner that clay gets. So uh, let's just pretend that I'm going to throw this to a finished piece. Uh, and I, I have not thrown it very well to this point because of my little mistake earlier and because of now trying to make it uneven. I'm not going to try to throw something immaculate. But let's just try to finish this off. I would probably pull that a little bit more if I was really trying to make something uh, really nice here. But I'm going to try to make a belly on the bottom and then bring in the top because that's usually, if I have to trim the top of a piece, it's usually because I have thrown, uh, thrown a piece, bellied out the bottom and trying to bring in the top to make like a bottle or a small top uh, vase or jug. I heard Ben Owen years ago talk about how if you can make a jug or a, or a bottle, and when you get to the you get to the point where you're bringing them in the top, and you can bring all that all the way in and never have to trim the top, then you know you've thrown that piece very well. Uh, it's not a requirement. It's not something that like means you're a bad potter if you have to trim it, but it just means that you threw that very well. And I know the times that I've had that happen. I feel like a million bucks because it's like, man, I threw like a jug or a bottle and I didn't even have to trim the top. Uh, but it, uh, like I said, it's not the sign of a good or a bad pot. It just means you threw it very well to get to that point. Now, you guys have probably seen me throw quite a few pieces where I bring in the top like this. And this is where it can have a tendency to get uneven because you're bringing that in. As you can, as you can saw that, as I'm bringing that in, it starts to... Uh, wobble up and down. One of my main applications of cutting the top off is to uh, is as I'm necking that necking the the top of that in. I will bring it in like that. I will trim the top to make it even, at least like I said, horizontally or vertically. However, however that means. You you know what I'm trying to say. Um, you can bring that back in again, and sometimes I will combine bringing in a neck like this with pulling because either while I'm bringing it in like that I kind of pulled a little bit between all of my fingers. I also like to pay attention to the shoulder here so that I can continue to keep the same shape that I want on the shoulder as I'm bringing that in. But what I mean by pulling a lot of times is as you bring that in you're getting it thicker because you're pinching in from being this wide to that wide. Uh, that also will help kind of keep it running even to uh, bring it in do a pull like this and if you pull steady enough then you're kind of pulling that unevenness to the top and then cutting it off so added the water so like I said it, it as you get toward closer and closer to the finish of a piece it gets more and more delicate usually as far as the uh, precision and how steady you need to be to cut off the top to make it even um, but that's just all part of the process and just comes with time and learning these techniques and practic practicing them so nothing hurts I, I, uh, uh, you practicing that I remember when I was younger in high school pulling up a cylinder and just practicing cutting it off you know just pull a cylinder and then you know just like I was kind of doing right there just pull a cylinder add some water, go in and cut it off, maybe mess it up a little bit again, or just keep cutting. Just add, a, smooth it up, add a little bit of water, and just cut off, cut off, cut off, all the way down the piece, just to give yourself some practice on, on cutting the top of a cylinder off. Uh, and then maybe, you know, like I said, and then take that practice and work it into something like this, where you have, uh, have worked towards the finish of a piece, and then be able to cut off the top to make it even, even though uh, the piece may not be perfectly centered or perfectly pulled, you can still end up with a nice piece by using tools to cut the top, uh, cut the rim off to even it up uh, throughout the process there.
Well, there you have it. I hope this uh, video helped you. I hope uh, learning these little tricks will help you make better pieces in the long run. And like I said, just take some time and practice cutting off on a piece that you're not really happy with so that later when you make a piece that you're really happy with, but you need to just trim that little bit of the top that you can do it without having, without fumbling through it and without messing up the entire piece. Because we've all probably done that at times too, where we got a piece that's pretty nice, but we're like, I want to trim that just that little bit. And then we go to trim it and the whole thing buckles and we lose a very nice piece just from trying to trim the top to even it up. I hate to see that happen for myself or anybody else. So here's some tips uh, on, on that and I hope it helps and uh, appreciate you all and we'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks, bye.